Hello world, and welcome back to more Bioshock. We are on our way to try and take down Frank Fontaine at Point Prometheus. So, let's go. <laughs> alright, alright, you looking to slug it out? I'm game, but I got all the atom in the city, pal, and I ain't shy about you. To take her out for a spin. What is this you wait for? Go and get this idiot! I apologize about some of those frame rate drops, but I literally can do nothing about it. The game always runs that slow at those scenes, not unless you have a super beefy computer. I think it's just a problem with the game itself, not with any of the hardware or anything I'm using. So. It would be incredibly difficult to get that scene to run correctly with no frame rate drops. And Rapture's a fish tank! Shy! You let him get away! Oh, I need a moment for think. Ah! Of course! This will be no problem. Find a big daddy and search his body. I would suggest you to be finding a dead one. You see the suit's control system? So good, get it. That is step one of turning you into one of those disgusting big daddies. The only way to get through that door complaint when through is to have a little one open it for you. They will only trust you if you look like, sound like, and even smell like one of those big, stinking brutes. We got a power to the people machine, and I'll be upgrading the chemical thrower. Now, the chemical thrower is kind of an OP weapon if you upgrade it, so that's why I kind of didn't upgrade it, is because I just ended up using it for everything. Because it's awesome, it can freeze, it can stun, it can do damage. It's, it's pretty cool. Little ones to imprint to certain smell, thermal. This is not like putting on aftershave. You will need three industrial applications of this stuff, and then the little ones will be thrown to you like a bee to honey. You will have to gather three pheromones here so that you smell disgusting, just like a big daddy. Like me. <laughs> 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 
By the way, I get so many auto-hacks out of the U-Invents that I no longer bother with hacking things. In fact, I might respect my tonics to ignore hacking altogether, since I get so many auto-hacks. I can only be glad I am nowhere near you and that awful stink. Why the little ones are drawn to the smell of those pheromones is beyond anything I can understand. So in this entire little wing of the area, we see how they have been mentally conditioning the little sisters. It isn't just a simple matter of injecting them with something to get them to behave in this way, though it will become that with all of this uh, behavior now instilled into the genetic memory of the atom. But as you can see, they just probably put a little sister in front of this machine and infinitely allowed them to press either button. But of course, when given the choice between potato chips or a controlled shock, it's the cake or death scenario. Which one would you like, cake or death? You have to decide. But was it really ever a choice?
So before they can be brainwashed by some of those different brainwashing machines, they have to be turned into a little sister and have their memories altered or wiped or whatever. And that involves putting them on the table and cutting them open surgically and putting the slugs inside of them, which is intensely unsettling. Are your enemies trying to lock up what's rightfully yours? Don't let them keep your hard-earned goods. Get them back with Safecracker 2! Hacksmart wants you to get what's coming to you! Now you need only to find the bodysuit and the voice box from the other lab, and you will be a proper fruit. Get moving. You're playing a bad hand, kid. You're just too spliced to smell it. Roll on back to Mother Goose now, or evidence gonna go busto. So, instead of talking about these gravestones that say Mommy and Daddy with two teddy bears in front of them, very sad, I'm going to talk about Frank Fontaine. Uh, now that he's back into his Frank Fontaine personality, he seems less confident and less aware of how to plan and actually do things. Uh, Atlas seemed to be more put together than Frank Fontaine seems to be. Oh look, a dead body. I'll walk past it. Oh, it got up. It's actually alive and is trying to kill me. I haven't seen that before down here in Rapture. I know why it has to be children, but why just girls? This I cannot determine why, but I know it is so. Fontaine says, ah, oh, one less bathroom to build in the orphanage. It is amazing to watch the effect of Adam on their small bodies. Their own cells replaced by the new stems the instant they are damaged. These children are practically invulnerable. It is a shame you could not do the same thing to an adult. There would be quite a market for a man you could not kill.
here's another reason why I was trying to limit my use of the chemical thrower. Although it's powerful and OP, it also puts flashing lights on the screen, and I'd rather not have to put a seizure warning on every single video just because I use the chemical thrower. Also, its ammunition is very cheap and readily available, so I could have made this entire thing like a seizure-infused disco. argue with you, Frank, but that's factually untrue. You tried to kill me the second all the truth was revealed. You didn't offer, hey, let's run this table together. You could have said that. I might have said yes, especially on an evil playthrough. Don't you give me dialogue that doesn't make any sense? Also, remember those ice barricades and stuff that stopped us before? They've suddenly returned, and I don't know why. Fontaine is dead. Bad for Fontaine. Good for Su Chong. Play hard to get it for a bit. Then Mr. Ryan get hungry for me. Tenenbaum gone, Fontaine gone. Su Chong, only one who know all about little sister. Like I said, it is very good for Su Chong. Here is where you'll be finding the voice box to have sound like one of those big daddies. Repulsive creatures. She's being pretty mean to the big daddies, which is kind of messed up when you consider the fact that literally all the big daddies do is try to keep the girls safe. They have no agency in them becoming little sisters, nor do they have any agency in their own decisions. They're just slaves. So it's kind of messed up to be mean to them for even a moment. Here comes another seizure warning, seizure warning, seizure warning. There's flashing lights and shit. It's a seizure warning, seizure warning. Close your eyes now. I just came up with this song because I'm bored and I have nothing better to do. Who? <laughs> It is a wounded bone. Thank you, mister. How can I thank you for this? I send another little one with a token of our appreciation. Look around you, kid. You think two-bit heroics count for a fig in this pit? You're staring down the puke stain of Ryan's busted dream. You think there's something worth saving down here? Then you deserve to gargle with the rest of these scrubs. <laughs> Are your hacks still being interrupted by alarms? Then you need Alarm Expert 2 today! A HackSmart Gene Tonic. I don't know, Topside. Maybe I was a little bit too hard on those HackSmart fellows. Now they're barely giving us anything to say, but before it was all that sciencey mumbo-jumbo that was hard to read, hard to say, couldn't do anything, and now 
Now I feel like there's nothing to do at all. Maybe I'm in the wrong here. We will make Big Daddy out of you yet, I think. But there's only one piece missing. The bodysuit. Go to fail-safe armored escort. So that machine is how the Big Daddies get their voice boxes ripped out and altered to sound like, you know, whales in the deep blue sea and everything. But, uh, I've always wondered, did Jack just stand there and let that machine do that to his throat? Oh my god! interesting fact about all of the Bioshock games is that you don't actually need the tape recordings of the various codes and stuff to input the codes. You can input the codes whenever you like. So even if there's like an entire big mission to go and find a code for a door, you can just put in the code, guess, or do whatever it takes to find it. And what is going on with that rocket? Look at that thing. That is crazy. So you can skip entire portions of the game if you really want to. And there we have it. Every single upgrade possible for the guns has been found. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so if I'd done anything differently, I would be standing here with an incomplete set. But it feels good to have them all upgraded, I gotta say. I'll admit Fontaine showed some foresight when he built up the plasmid business, but the man really never understood sales. Hiding those little girls beneath a bushel. I've just seen the preliminary design work on the new plasmid machines, and they're exactly what I wanted. Mark my words, presented properly, those little sisters are marketing gold. See, now, Ryan, it's funny you should talk about that, because I think everyone watching this right now should go ahead and hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. It helps me with my eternal war with the YouTube algorithmos and blah 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 blah. Okay, back to the action.
We tricked you, monster. Ryan takes this place, here is where they build their filthy golems, their Frankensteins. Find the pieces of the vision. Guide them. So, remember that gift I got from the Gatherer's Garden? This little sister is the one that dropped it off. And I was actually amazed with myself that I was able to recognize that she was saved and not one of the little sisters that need to be saved. Because I about attacked this big daddy and got into a fight for no reason. The ultimate development of the Hacker's Delight line, this will make every hacker a healthy hacker. You know, Johnny, have you ever wondered why different competing brands would hire the same voice person for their commercials? Huh. Yeah, it makes a good start. Now you go to find a body suit and a pair of boots. Now I know what you're all thinking. Are we seriously going to spend the rest of the game inside this helmet with limited vision? And the answer is yes. Yes, we really are. We are actually going to spend the rest of the game looking through this little optic circle and having impaired vision. I mean, I love it because that's reality, but I hate it because that's reality. <laughs> So, interesting example there. From now on, as long as I am wearing this helmet, there is a chance that some splicers will actually run from me rather than fight. Now, if I corner them, they'll fight regardless, but I will no longer be just randomly attacked from behind by some spl lonely splicer who just popped out of a corner. They'll be afraid of me instead, especially if they don't have other splicers with them. Oh, a terrible thing. Japanese kill every man in my city, except for Suchong. Suchong have opium. Very good opium. This war, terrible. 
one thing too, but not for Su Chong. Everyone's scared now. Everyone needs Adam. All the little sisters can make. Good news is Romix runs some corpses. Su Chong knows a way to recycle Adam from corpses, but can't send the little sister out the street unprotected. Su Chong must think on this. Could I have made mistakes? One does not build cities if one is guided by doubt. But can one govern in absolute certainty? I know that my beliefs have elevated me just as I know that the things I have rejected would have destroyed me. But the city is collapsing before me. Have I become so convinced by my own beliefs that I have stopped seeing the truth? Perhaps. But Atlas is out there, and he aims to destroy me and to destroy my city. To question is to surrender. I will not question. Gotta hand it to Andrew Ryan for being able to question his own ideals. That's very rare in most fanatics. Big Daddy. Make a terrible stink. Very smelly. Maybe something can be done. But the little sisters seem to like order. Now we have to find the recruits. You become Big Daddy, it's a one way street. But Ryan says, don't worry. Recruits will be no problem. That Ryan. <laughs> He's a good guy.
Looking out the windows of Bioshock 1 is not as fun as looking out the windows of Bioshock 2, because stuff doesn't move around and things aren't, like, really animated. But it is nice. And, of course, no matter what window you look out in Bioshock 1, you're going to see the Fleet Hall, because they only did the one portrait, and that portrait is on every window. They didn't bother to actually three-dimensionally think about where things are. I know they fixed that in Bioshock 2, but it's funny in Bioshock. Let's see what's in the through this window. The boots. I was sure the boots would be here. Oh, shit. Now, if you're really used to utilizing your plasmids to disarm these traps like I am, you're just going to get stopped by them and sit there forever trying to figure out how to get through them, especially if you don't currently have the right stuff. But really, I can just walk right through it. If you're wondering why the security cameras have suddenly become way more aggressive here in the end part of the game, there's an actual lore reason for that. It's because they're no longer trying to avoid hurting Andrew Ryan or his family. They're now controlled by Frank Fontaine and he says go ahead and kill anyone with Andrew Ryan's DNA. So all of the benefits that I once had that would allow me to come through here without getting killed by the security are no longer act active. And it used to take a while for them to actually call security drones to me, or for drones to even attack me at all. Uh, in the early parts of the game, they were slow, now they're fast. So that's pretty cool. I like it when difficulty is explained by lore, rather than when it's just, well, you're in, you're in endgame territory, so boss harder. Are you afraid of me, monster? <laughs>
Yes. Now this is a big daddy. Are you ready? Now go to the little sister vent by the proving grounds. I got Rapture now. I got the Atom now. You think that pill suit even half enough to put the spear in me? <laughs> You need to bring them out of hiding, and then they'll let you in the door. Go on, hit the vent with your wrench. And better. It would mean very much to me if you will be gentle with the girl. Mein kleines Mädchen. All right, we have successfully been transformed. Well, not really transformed. We're just we're just successfully dressed up as we're cosplaying as a big daddy with the actual armor and stuff, it's just that we're not properly put into the suit, because that would nearly kill me. The little ones will lead you to Fontaine, but you must protect them. Hey. 